good evening students uh, let us see how uh, data acquisition system functions uh, in this video and I will show you a demonstration on uh, how this data is acquired uh, in MA lab view software and before going into this let us understand uh, this uh, transducer first okay and uh, what you see on the screen is actually a strain gauge so this is the strain gauge so strain gauge is nothing but uh, say these metallic wires uh, pasted on a thin film so when you apply force when you apply force the resistance of this wire changes so by default these wires will have some resistance when you apply force the resistance varies so the force may be compressive force compressive force you apply like this uh, see the cursor compressive force you apply like this tensile force you apply like this so compressive force or tensile force will change the resistance across these leads and now what you have done is uh, we have connected this strain gauge here so strain gauge actually what it does it converts this force into resistance this resistance is actually a measure of strain experienced by this film so this force is converted into strain through this strain gauge so what we have done is, uh, so the strain is nothing but change in resistance. So this resistance is uh, connected to a bridge circuit. Uh, this you might have seen. Could you able to identify what is this bridge? So yes, this is Wheatstone bridge circuit. So you have resistances uh, connected with a DC source. So for the bridge uh, to be in balanced condition, we know uh, this uh, arm, the potential drop across this arm should be equal to potential drop across this arm that means you see R2 the potential drop across this arm should be equal to the potential drop across this arm so when this happens we say the bridge is in balanced condition and the output of this uh, voltage be zero so to ensure that what is done is this R2 value is made equal to the minimum resistance offered by this strain gauge so R2 value is made equal to the minimum resistance offered by this strain gauge. So when there is no load or no force, the resistance will be minimum. So when there is no load, the resistance is minimum and the, that resistance will be equal to R2. Hence potential drop across this arm and this arm will be equal. Hence the output voltage is zero. So what does that mean? So if there is no load, output will be zero. And if there is more load, output varies. So this is the working principle of strain gauge. So now what you have seen is this strain getting converted into output voltage. So the strain gauge is a transducer. It converts a physical quantity into electrical quantity. Now we will go to this video. So what I have done here is I have uh, used 1 kilogram of weight. So this total amounts to 1 kilogram of weight. Uh, it is connected to a cantilever beam. See this is the cantilever beam. So this is the cantilever beam on which load is connected. This cantilever beam it actually sits on strain gauge. So uh, inside this you have the strain gauge. That thin film you have seen now. So the thin film is here. So uh, to this thin film you are uh, connecting a cantilever beam and cantilever beam ex experiences load. So if load increases what happens inside the strain also increases. So you can connect maximum of 1 kilogram to this strain gauge. So I have connected maximum load now. So this uh, strain resistance is being interfaced here. Interfaced to this board. So you see, so this is the strain, it is coming from the strain gauge. See this is the variable resistance which is the output of the strain gauge and the other three resistances are constant values. So here you are seeing the Wheatstone bridge circuit. So you get some output and that output may not be sufficient to interface with your data acquisition system. So normally this output will be in terms of millivolt. So we need some instrumentation amplifier circuit and gain amplifier. So these are actually signal conditioners. So data acquisition system, you see strain gauge, so transducer, it is interfaced here and you get some bridge output and it is signal conditioned here. Signal condition is here it is actually amplification. So it is amplified 
and across these uh, multi multimeter terminals uh, you get the electrical output so the normally the output is 0 to 5 volt so that means these amplifiers are designed in such a way if the strain is 0 and you get 0 volt and if the strain is maximum 300 maximum 300 and the output is 5 volt so this is designed for 0 to 5 volt output whereas the input strain is 0 to 300 now you see uh, it is actually indicating 291 so it, it has to be 300 so approximately it is indicating 291 is the value of strain for the load of 1 kilogram so we have this uh, national instruments uh, data acquisition card you see here so this is the data acquisition card from national instruments so we have used this channel analog input file see the cursor analog input file is the channel we have used so this is the positive um, output and this is the negative so what we have to do is we have to connect the 0 to 5 volt output from the signal conditioner uh, to this data acquisition card okay so it is it is connected here and uh, this data acquisition card what it actually does is it uh, converts this analog 0 to 5 volt into digital output and there will inside there will be a multiplexer because we have uh, so many analog input channels so you can use uh, simultaneous analog input channels of this card and uh, this uh, multiplexer inside will select the channel appropriate channel uh, through sampling okay and, uh, see. this is uh, interfaced with the uh, computer so data vision card is interfaced and inside this computer you have this uh, software so, so there is a front panel and this uh, back panel. So, front panel you see all displays and back panel where is your logic or uh, your program sits. And you see. So, this is the data acquisition function. So, I have used uh, the data acquisition function from the LabVIEW software. So, it actually acquires the data from the hardware. And uh, this is nothing but 0 to 5 volt. So I have used some multiplying function because I want the strain in the range of 0 to 300. So the actual data uh, getting acquired is 0 to 5. So it has to be multiplied with 600, am I right? 600, uh, 16, sorry, 60. So I have used 58, approximately you can also use 60. So this is done to ensure I get a value from 0 to 300. So I get 0 to 5. So you multiply with the 60 you get 0 to 300 so that is what I have done so I have used uh, display functions here so this is the um, gauge and this is the trend over time that means I want to visualize this train over time so from initial time till the final time what is the uh, range of strain I am getting from the transducer that also I want to monitor so this is actually the virtual data acquisition system you are seeing here and you can also select uh, voltages uh, through the software so I am interfacing the um, signal conditioner output 0 to 5 volt uh, to the data acquisition card See, this is how it is getting interfaced with the data acquisition card and you see I am running the program and I am getting some output here so you can also see it as a table numerical value 5.2 something I got some 5.2 something as the output now I have I am building the uh, program okay. so let me stop it and run it again you will see the display here yeah so you got some 290 some value in the signal conditioner and uh, I am getting approximately an equivalent value in the data equation system also so this is how uh, we use data equation system so we acquire some output from the transducer uh, here we have used only displays you can also uh, do some control logics or you can monitor the data in other formats also so this is only two formats gauge and uh, display format we have used to see 290 is the actual strain display and you are getting the uh, similar value close to that one so what you have seen now is how a data vision system functions okay thank you